Hi, I'm Wayne and this is Bastow Woodworking. Today we're going to be making a lamp, but not just any kind of lamp, we're going to make a lamp that looks like a candle pin. The body of the lamp will be a candle pin, there will be a base underneath it, and then the lamp shade will sit above. There was a lamp much like this that I believe my grandfather had made that sat in my house all while I was growing up, so I'm going to make my own. I'm going to turn the pin on the lathe just like bowling pins used to be turned. I'm going to then bore a hole through it, mount it to a base, and I have a lamp kit coming in the mail in the next couple of days, and I'll be able to assemble and have this thing all done. To the end of creating a new pin, I'm going to now cut the poplar blanks so that I can make another blank to turn a bowling pin out of. I cut the poplar down to just over 16 inches. This will be a much better wood for this type of project. One, it will turn just as easily as the cherry did on the lathe, but I won't feel bad when I go to paint it because I won't feel like I'm ruining this really nice piece of wood. Alright, I'm gonna let each pair dry overnight. I'll then join the two pairs together. We'll give that about six to eight hours to fully dry and cure. I can then turn it into another bowling pin. As you can tell by my sudden wardrobe change, it is the next day now. The halves have been drying overnight. I can now remove the clamps and then glue the two halves together to make my final blank. Now we wait for that to dry. I'm going to give it about six to eight hours so that the glue can fully cure. It's a little bit cold in the shop this morning. Hopefully it warms out throughout the day, but eight hours should be plenty for this to um, cure and become strong enough for me to turn. So I'm going to leave this, check back in probably around four o'clock this afternoon. The blank has now had a solid eight, eight and a half hours to fully set. So I'm going to remove the clamps, square up the ends, and then I will head over to the lathe to turn this into a bowling pin. Just like I did in the previous video, I have a caliper set to my center dimension and a caliper set to my end dimension, and I'll just taper down to it. I'm going to be checking it constantly, getting this into round as quickly as possible, and then tapering it slowly, setting my center line, all that stuff. Um, there's another bowling pin down. I put the groove for the stripe a little bit deeper on this one um, I figured it might make it easier to tape it off when I go to paint it. This one will be painted um, So obviously this will be white red stripe now that the pin is complete We have the not very straightforward task of drilling a hole all the way through this pin This pins about 16 inches long so it's not so much that it's going to be hard to drill a hole in the center since center is already marked for us on both ends from the lathe it's the length of a drill bit that's going to be the main limiting factor and the capacity of a drill press so i have a 3 8 inch spade bit that is long enough to reach through the entire um pin but we still have capacity issues on my drill press and i don't want to do this with a hand drill because i want to make sure that the hole lines up on both sides that way I end up with one straight hole through the whole pin. And this is pretty much the main reason I keep this shopsmith around. This gives me an incredibly deep drill press bed, so I should be able to get the holes nice and started and possibly drill all the way through this thing. To drill the final piece of the hole, I have completely removed the table from the shopsmith and I've just put this tool stand underneath it to act as a table. I can then drive the 3 8 spade bit the rest of the way through the um, piece. I will need to add some blocks to gain some height underneath this because 
the shopsmith does not have like 16 inches of throw for the drill so i'll have to continuously add little blocks underneath to basically give myself that height So that was very slow going and the setup was kind of a pain to keep changing out just to get another three quarters of an inch drilled through. So I have it all chopped up in a vise now and I have just a um, hand drill. And I'm gonna see, just keep it as level as I can and just power through. Now the pin is essentially done, I can now give it its final sanding and then start priming it for paint. Um, once it's all painted, I can then install all of its electronics and create a base for it. This is now sanded to 240 grit. I don't want to get much smoother than that because I still want this to have some wood grain to it. I want it to be clear that when you see it ac from across the room that it's a wooden bowling pin. So I'm going to now set this up to prime it. Now that the primer is dry on the bowling pin, I can hit it with its first coat of white. Although it's getting warmer outside every day, it's nighttime right now, so it's about 45 degrees in the shop right now, which is not ideal for paint to dry. So I've set up a basic little oven using an old Home Depot bucket. I took an old hair dryer that I had, I cut a hole in the top of the Home Depot bucket, and I have the hair dryer blowing hot air into that bucket, and everything vents out the bottom through a couple of 2x4s. So this will make the ambient temperature inside the bucket warm enough that the paint will dry in a reasonable amount of time, without risking any kind of fire or anything like that. Okay, it is now the next day, so it's time for another coat of white paint on the bowling pin. paint for the red stripes now applied and drying. Now it's time to direct my attention to the base of the lamp. I have a couple of scrap pieces of maple. I'm going to try to make the base out of these. This was originally going to be the post to the 2 by 72 inch belt sander, but this board has like a pretty gnarly twist in it, but should be perfectly fine for creating a little base for the lamp. Starting at the table saw, I ripped a few half inch strips from the chunks of maple that I have. I used a 4x4 piece of Baltic birch plywood for the base and using my miter saw cut the maple to 45 degree miters, creating a frame around the birch. I thought that this would present the pin nicely and give the impression that it was sitting on a bowling lane. To fill in some of the gaps, I used some homemade wood putty, which was just the maple sawdust from the miter saw mixed with some wood glue and then applied with um, a scrap piece of wood just right into the gaps. And here I'm just fitting a base onto the box. It's going to need to be removable so that I can replace any wiring as need be. So I'm just using some number eight wood screws to hold it on. So I've let the pin dry for quite a while and the acrylic paint I'm using for the red just isn't adhering to the pin the way I would like it to. Um, I can't see this lasting very long. So I'm just going to take a damp rag and wipe all that off 
it's just a water-based paint it will wash right off and i'm going to go to my backup plan which is right electrical tape this is actually pretty much what they use on real bowling pins um, which are made out of acrylic now Now that I have all the constituent parts of the lamp finished, I can now start finishing the base so that when I mount the pin to it, I don't have to ever take it apart again. I followed a multi-stage finishing process for the base. I started with some boiled linseed oil. Maple is a very light wood and it hides its grain very well, but boiled linseed oil actually works really well to bring that grain out and make it visible. I then put a couple of coats of shellac followed by some spray lacquer to seal the whole thing together. First coat of shellac is now drying on the base. We have to give that about an hour to dry. Then we lightly sand it um, with some 220 grit sandpaper and then we reapply another thin coat of shellac. It's very important to get any of the shellac that you just sanded off, off or it won't bond properly. So be conservative with shellac, it goes a long way and you don't want it to become sticky. If you put too much shellac on, you get the sticky mess. That takes forever to cure. So just a nice light coat and you'll already see all of the grain of the wood just come out. Make sure you just keep with the grain and nice light coat. Once everything was dried, all that was left to do was to install the actual lamp hardware. is done. I really like the way it came out. It was a nice challenging build, but it was nothing insurmountable. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with new projects as they are released. And until next time, thank you.